point on folks um i'm going to show you a little maintenance tip that i think um, is so often overlooked when you're talking about your bass boat and keeping everything working correctly um you know especially for you guys that are tournament fishermen your live oil is literally your livelihood you know that's where you keep your catch at and if your catch doesn't survive that's going to cost you money uh fortunately on a falcon it has a really unique live well system that i'll show you i've actually got three pumps on my live well i've got an auxiliary fill where i can actually just fill up my live well one pump just dedicated to filling my live wells up i've got one pump that's totally dedicated to recirculating the water that's already in the live well and i also have a, a timed aerator as well so i have three aerators in my my falcon so if one fails i've got three times before that i can go through three pumps that i can go through before i'm totally out which is great but i still keep an extra aerator just in case one goes out um, sometimes you can get a little garbage in there get a little sand and um, that can harm the blades of your aerator and when that happens you're toast you're done um, but, you know traditional boats usually only have one or two aerators in there and that's it and once those one or two go out and a lot of times one aerator works for the other they're not totally independent uh, so it's really important to keep those those screens and so forth clear and I'm going to show you what I, how I clean my live wheels um, and I think it's something that uh, that you definitely can benefit from so let's look at my live wheels here you can see they're pretty grungy I've been uh, fishing quite a few tournaments here and they're just nasty now a lot of that grime and so for a lot of that stuff you see in my live wheels that actually comes from sediment that's kicked back up from the lake so you're in you know you're in the back of a little creek kicking in reverse and your engine kicks up a lot of that sediment off the bottom of the lake and that and your aerator pumps suck up that sediment and they deposit it back in your live wheels so that's where a lot of the dirt a lot of the harm to your to your aerator pumps comes from is actually from your big engine when you're fishing really shallow so um, one cool feature again on my falcon which i know every boat doesn't have that and we'll go through some of the stuff that you need to clean your live wheels here here in a second one of the coolest things um, on my falcon you can see here right here there is actually a drain plug and I can pull this plug and totally drain my live wheels they so just take a hose and flush out all of that dirt and sediment you know my TH marine colon clips I can drain all of my sediment out of that drain plug that is totally independent that plug is only for draining my live wheels that's a real cool deal that's something you don't see in a lot of bass boats also, another part that you want to clean is your intakes for your live wells. Your two intakes are going to be near the back of your live well. And a lot of times sediment is kicked up for, uh, into these as well. So I like to take these off and just blow some water back through them just to keep them nice and clean. That way you're siphoning in nice clean water into your live wells and you're getting as much flow as possible to your pumps. So if, you're, if your live well doesn't have the drainage system like what I have here, one of the most important parts that you can do very first thing you need to do is take your shop vac take some paper towels take a towel whatever and actually vacuum out all the loose material you can fill up your live wells a little bit and take a net in there and get up some of the that loose rock and sediment that crawfish um, pinchers and shad whatever's in the bottom of your live well you can get that out with the shop vac so we'll start with that first So it's important to get a lot of that loose material out of there first because what we're going to do is we're going to take off some of these live wheel screens and actually clean those and when we put water in here we don't want to wash all that rock and sediment and loose debris in our live wheels we don't want that to wash back down in our pumps get in the blades and injure our pumps or make the pumps malfunction so it's really important to get all that loose material out of there first now what I like to use for my live wheels, you've heard me mention it, I use this for just about cleaning anything. I use only two products. I'll use some Dawn dish detergent and I'll use either baking soda or I'll use Dawn dish detergent and white vinegar. Whatever works best for you. My dad was uh, really particular when I was growing up about keeping his live well clean and he always used baking soda. I highly suggest that you use a natural product, something that is um, 
real delicate fish are delicate their slime coats delicate delicate i highly discourage you guys from using clorox bleach or anything like that those are really harsh chemicals i don't want to have chemicals in my live well and that, that residue that's left from clorox bleach any of those harsh chemicals or anything you would use as a household cleaner i wouldn't suggest that you use that in your live well all we want to do really is clean up the loose debris and any kind of scum that's in our live well is a good idea. I don't think you really have to concentrate too much on cleaning any kind of bacteria. Anything that's in your live well that's come from the lake anyway, from the fish's natural environment. The biggest inhibitor or the biggest problem that you're going to have with your live wells is your pumps malfunctioning. It's most likely not going to be a bacterial or fungal issue. I use that TH Marine Oxygenator in my live well system and I've noticed that it, on a really hot day and I turn those oxygenators on, those bass will lay right up beside that screen in my live well. So um, it's a really important deal. I'm not really sure how that works, okay? All I know is that when I have an oxygenator on in my live well, all the bass suck to the oxygenator. So there's something good about it that the fish like there. <clears throat> After I've got everything cleaned out, all the loose debris cleaned out of my live well, I'm just going to um, I'm going to take a hose pipe and I'm just going to pump up a little bit of water in my live wells, just maybe just a quarter inch or so, and um, I'm going to pour a little bit of Dawn dish detergent. You can use baking soda if you'd like, uh, but I like to use I prefer to use the white vinegar. In my opinion, uh, my dad always used baking soda, but I feel like baking soda could possibly use, leave a little bit of chalky residue in there, and I can. In my mind, chalky residue and fish gills is not really a good combination. Um, but a lot of my friends that are in the uh, that that sell bait fish and uh, that are in the business of, of selling blueback herring, they use baking soda. After I run a little water in there, I'll take my screens off, and make sure they're real clean. I'm not real particular about measuring my dawn. I'll just kind of put a little bit of dawn in there. And uh, here's my white vinegar. I use vinegar for everything. I'll just pour a little bit of white vinegar in there. Not that much. And uh, just start scrubbing dub dub. Cleaning live wells. It's just like cleaning the toilet. I'm sure the fish poop in here too. So there you go. Just a little dawn. Just a little light touch of uh, white vinegar. And uh, I'm clean. That's it. Just take your little drain plug and put it back in, uh, put it back in the hole there and you're good. Keeping your live wells clean is more about keeping your pumps functional than it is about bacteria. So make sure you guys try that. Uh, keep those live wells uh, clean. Make sure that you get a TH Marine oxygenator installed on your live wells. I promise. That deal is a deal. I don't understand how it works, but I know that every bass in my live well always sucks to that oxygenator. So I guess it's like having a little fan in there. Make sure you get a Tish Marine oxygenator. You're going to keep your bass alive. You're going to be a lot happier not getting penalties for having dead bass. So try that out. Hope it helps you guys. Thanks.